Hi, good afternoon. My name is Nana Oye Letha. I'm aspiring to be the parliamentary candidate for the NDC for the Adenta constituency. I live here. This is my home. I live in Adenta. I've lived here for um, almost uh, 15 years. I've lived in Adenta. Um, I've worked for Adenta. I've worked with the community. Um, my branch, my NDC branch is a word miracle branch and I believe that once I belong to the Adenta community, I can offer myself to serve the people of Adenta, my community. Other constituencies asked me to contest in their areas. Um, I have worked in several communities throughout the length and breadth of Ghana. I've worked in Ododiodio, I've worked in Ayawaso East, I've worked in Shama, I've worked in Jomoro, I've worked in Elembele, I've worked in Tamale, I've worked in Nkwanta, and Nungwa, and several, several other communities. Efie Nifie, home is home, and home is Adenta. And so together with our community in Adenta, the NDC community, we are looking at presenting a candidate to serve the good people of Adenta, Nana Oyelitha. My chances are very good. My chances are very good. I have very good, great support from the people of Adenta, specifically um, the NDC. Um, I'm, I'm a brand. I have worked very hard. Everybody can attest to my hard work, what I have done the results that uh, together with the team that I worked with uh, we have been able to achieve both as a um, human rights lawyer addressing the human rights needs and that is also a people's oriented um, a, a, a people's oriented vocation where as a human rights lawyer I did a lot of uh, cases and then also um, striding or uh, moving to a public sector. I was a public officer, a cabinet minister in charge of gender, children and social protection. There I also endeared myself and I worked well and I was actually um, the institute or the ministry was voted the best public office by Imani in 2016. And so in terms of experience, in terms of competency, in terms of uh, capabilities, um, I stand um, tall. And then also, I resonate with people in the community, and I also resonate with people out of the um, community. Specifically for um, Adenta, um, it's, um, it's actually a very multifaceted community. We have all the ethnic groups, it's quite cosmopolitan, and um, in terms of urbanization, um, it's quite high in terms of urbanization so you have a whole mixture uh, we have a very dynamic youth population in Adenta and there are issues of unemployment which I'm looking at as top top priority unemployment of the youth we have uh, an infrastructure deficit and um, the road infrastructure we have challenges with road infrastructure we have waterlogged areas so there's a uh, constant uh, flooding so um, there's a need to address the infrastructure and access to education. Also um, another thematic area that we need to look at very critically. And then also women's empowerment, especially women's economic empowerment, um, skills training for the youth, skill training also um, for, for the women. So um, lots of the sleeve in terms of improving the livelihoods of the people of Adenta, improving the living conditions and ensuring that we have a very cohesive um, cohesive um, environment uh, for the people of Adenta and that uh, people are comfortable. Road infrastructure very very critical as I drive and as I walk um, to do my campaign I realize that um, our roads are not good some of the roads are really really bad and there's a need to attend to this so working together with the community and working with the municipal um, assembly to address um, these issues would be my priority. I do not think so. Um, it will not affect that. The people of Adenta are looking at a parliamentary
candidate and a member of parliament who can represent them ably, who can articulate their needs, who would stand in parliament and speak to their issues, who would participate actively in deliberations in parliament. I have had extensive experience in the legislative making process. As a human rights lawyer, I help to advocate for passage of many laws in Ghana. The, the, dom the, the Domestic Violence um, Law, the, the Domestic Violence Act, the Disabilities Act, the Mental Health Act, and the Right to Information Act. These four, and even, and of course, the uh, Children's Act, the Children's Act and Amendment of the Criminal uh, Code to include um, uh, criminalization of certain sexual offenses. So I can mention from the top of my head about seven, about seven key laws in Ghana that I was personally involved in advocacy, in helping to amend, coming up with a good draft. Actually, for the Right to Information Bill, I was the convener of the Right to Information Bill, and I did load, a lot of advocacy, setting up um, uh, regional coalitions. I reinvigorated the Coalition on the Right to Information, and then I set up all the regional coalitions on the Right to Information. So in terms of making laws, I have very extensive experience in making laws, both as an advocate, an advocate for the laws, and then as a cabinet minister. Because as a cabinet minister, I was, um, I, I spearheaded about five policies, school feeding policy, uh, children, child and family welfare policy, the gender policy, the social protection policy. Over four years, no other minister in Ghana has been able to achieve that five policies just in a space of um, four years and then also um, laws, regulations, the trafficking regulations, the human trafficking regulations and then also the domestic violence regulations. Then you come to the laws. So we have the Aged Bill, we also have um, the Aged Bill, the Children's Act, uh, an amendment of the Children's Act, ratification of the UN Convention um, on, um, on Adoption, uh, and, and under my watch that was also um, done. And then also, there, there, are, there are several others, even foster care, the foster care regulations, and several, several others also, very extensive. So as for the legislative making process, I'm very familiar with it. I'm very experienced with it. Um, I helped to draft some of these laws. I critiqued the laws. I have publications on these laws. I have done research on these laws. So in terms of parliament work, I stand tall even though I've not been a member of parliament. In terms of community work also, I stand tall in terms of engagement, uh, training, in terms of sensitization, engaging with the communities to make sure that um, they have um, access to social services and all that. So um, the experience is there. The experience is there. The key is that the people of Adenta are discerning. The people of Adenta know exactly what they want in terms of representation. So they know the duties and responsibilities and obligations of their uh, member of parliament, exactly what that member of parliament should do and what it, they should not do. So, and the people of Adenta are very discerning. And I believe that if the member of parliament serves the people, they will be responsive and they will vote for the Member of Parliament. It's the quality, it's the quality of um, the population that is here, it's the population dynamics that is here. As you drive along, people know exactly what they want and they know exactly what they would want their representative to do and they engage with you and they actually ask you questions that, like if you come, this is, these are our expectations, so I suppose that if their expectations are not met, they understand the power of the thumb and they apply that power um, come elections. So the key is to ensure that the expectations of the electorate in Adenta are met. 
I have represented the people of Ghana as a cabinet minister. I have represented ordinary people as a human rights lawyer. I have fought for human rights for several, several, several people and ensured that laws are put in place for, for people, for women, for children, for the elderly and what have you. So though I have not technically been a member of parliament, I have represented people as a minister, I have represented uh, people as a lawyer and I believe it's just slipping into another role and the key is to address the needs of the people, to be able to listen to the people, let them tell you what their issues are, let them tell you what their problems are, and then you in turn address those problems to the best of your ability. If you need to make a referral to an institution or something, you follow up and make the referral. Uh, people just want to be listened to and people want to be supported and um, assisted to address their needs and they believe that, the, that that is the duty of the member of parliament and um, once you hold yourself up once i have decided that i would like to serve the people of Adenta, then i need to rise up to that and ensure that i'm able to address those needs it is very important to be true to yourself it's very important to be principled it's very important to have integrity. It is very important to be honest. And all these values I adhere to jealously. I'm honest, I have integrity, I, I speak truth to power, I don't mince my words, and I just make sure that I'm focused. And what is my responsibility? As a member of parliament, it would be to serve the needs of my people. And that is very critical. So it is what the people want that we articulate. We are winning. It's not even we want to win. We are winning. Um, I believe that um, um, after we lost in December 2016, we did some introspection and we came up with the Kwesi Botre report. And um, it had um, comprehensive recommendations moving um, forward. So as you can see, there's a reorganization in process and um, as I move around I see the, the the branches are more vibrant and active so one key one key one key 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 thing is the branches because the branches are the veins of our party the branches are in the community so the branches will be able to galvanize um, supporters and all that so um, there's this new program about adopting a branch. Uh, I have adopted my branch. Uh, two other branches I've also um, adopted in within Adenta. Apart from that, we are very clear in terms of our direction as a party, very, very clear. And so at the national level to communication is very important. Holding this government accountable whilst we are in opposition um, holding the government accountable and communicating the, the true picture, the true, the true accurate picture to the people of Ghana. Beyond communicating the true accurate picture to the people of Ghana, letting the people of Ghana see, know and feel the alternative, which I would term a better NDC alternative. So all these were, we've put in place and um, going according to plan. Ghanaians should expect a government that respects the rule of law, human rights. We see what's happening with Afoko. We saw what happened with your colleague journalists who were tortured, a carrier bag, rubber bag put over their head and tied. Uh, we, we see the impunity, the closing down of radio stations. Um, the, the attempt to muscle and politicize um, key public institutions, including the banks, including tertiary institutions, and the impunity with which is done. We see um, the rise of insecurity. We see um, the unfortunate kidnapping with respect to the insecurity kidnapping of girls. We still haven't heard or seen anything. So um, there are several, several issues that we would put right and we would not do um, the way and then of course the increase in the high cost of living also and then the, the corruption is also going on unabated and all this we will address as a government. We are neither the devil nor the deep blue sea. What didn't Manasseh say and do? He 
stayed in Ghana, even the our tolerant, patient, affable President John Gramani Mahama actually even contributed to his book and actually um, part participated. That's the level, that is the tolerance that we're talking about. That is the different, that is the different story. That is the alternative, the better alternative. A party and a government that respects and observes the rule of law that ensures that its citizens are protected to the extent that we, ex we respect diversity, different opinions. People are allowed to articulate their ideas, their views, freedom of expression, um, no suppression of the media as is happening now. And, and the irony is that we have um, a president who claims that he is a human rights lawyer. And look at what is happening, Gregory Afoko, bail conditions set, and then he's um, now another high court has said that um, he cannot be granted bail. What is happening? And the NDC offers a much, much better alternative. When you sleep, you can sleep under NDC and know that you'll be safe. My final word, um, I have submitted my nomination forms to be considered and voted by delegates on the 24th of August 2019 as the parliamentary candidate for NDC Adenta constituency. I'm asking all the delegates to vote for Nana Oyelitha. Nana Oyelitha is the Ya Asantua of our times. Nana Oyelitha is honest. Nana Oyelitha is brave, she's courageous, she's hardworking, she's focused, she's a team player, and she will lead NDC Adenta to victory come December 2020. Chobwe! Chobwe! Thank you.